Terry, yes, thanks sir. for coming in the store today, man. Hey, this thanks. Is, uh, we're, I feel like we're old friends by now. How long have we known each other? Uh, I don't lost track, man. I don't know. It's, I mean, it hasn't been a long time, but it, it feels like it's been a long time, man. It feels like a long time. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like who you are and like, you yeah, know, what you do. Give us a little synopsis before we get started. <sighs> Wow, man, we don't have enough time, man. <laughs> We'd have to do like a little mini series. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a, I jokingly say I'm a boring guy, man. I just, I'm kind of in my own world or whatever, of course. Uh, husband, father, uh, Kathy and I, we would, uh, we'll be married on Valentine's Day, uh, 31 years. Oh, wow. 32, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, we'll, we're sorry about yeah, that. Glad she's not here to give me the look. Yeah. Uh, six kids, of course, and uh, you know I've uh, been blessed to be able to pursue my passion, really, which is people. Yeah. You know, and it just so happens to be a byproduct of broadcasting. But I think at the end of the day, really, it's it's just people. Uh, whether it's started off as entertaining, and then as I grew in the broadcasting industry, it's it's a form of engaging. You know, with with people. Yeah. whether that's with music, mainly with content, you know. Yeah. I consider myself a content curator, so to speak, you know, because mm -hmm. I manage the individuals that put content together uh, for the masses. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, and that's, I think that's been our connection from the beginning is that with, with eyewear, with uh, music and entertainment, it's, it's about the people. Yes. The, these things are just the conduit to the people. Yes. So you, you've always struck, uh, struck me and you've helped me a lot with understanding, you understand people really well from a marketing perspective. <laughs> and I feel like that's a gift that I'm learning, um, a skill that I'm learning, but a gift that you have. Talk a little bit about that. How do you understand what people want, that curation process, the marketing process? What is your philosophy on that or your thoughts? Wow, that's pretty deep. Uh, honestly, I think it just goes back to being a quiet, shy, bashful person, you know, only would talk around my buddies that I'm close to starting off in the neighborhood, then going off to school and being that quiet, quiet, shy guy and not talking, feeling awkward because I was always a baby giant. <laughs> and, and, and you're, you're tall, Terry? Yeah. I'm, 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 hey, tall Terry. Terry yeah. <laughs> If you and I travel to Dallas, if we stop in uh, Ardmore, Oklahoma, if we walk up to Starbucks, they say, you're Tom Terry. <laughs> That's just something I do for people to remember my name. But uh, yeah, being that awkward tall guy and uh, wanting to connect with people and starting to come out of my shell, you know, feeling like, well, I'm an okay guy mm -hmm. and, and challenging myself as I was young to step outside of my comfort zone and uh, to start to bond and connect with friends, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I think that's, that's kind of the core where it comes from. So when I see someone, uh, whether it's a business or whether it's someone in conversation, uh, even someone at a counter at a grocery store that I'm talking to, you know, I always have the need to want to connect, mm -hmm. even if they have a negative disposition or they're having a rough day, it's kind of hard for me to let it go. I'll say something or do something just to try to connect and hopefully to have some sort of positive experience just in that moment. Yeah. If I can bring something to the table for that person, you know, as well as me walking away, you know, feeling like, well, I hope I left something like a, like a little sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> a little drop of sunshine. <laughs> Sounds like a commercial. <laughs> This is my friend Terry, he drops sunshine everywhere he goes. Boom, boom. You'll yeah. get some sunshine. You'll get some sunshine. The Oprah of sunshine. <laughs> oh, oh man, that's no, that's really good. I've experienced that. Yeah. You know, we're we're out and about and like you said, you're a tall guy. Yeah. People notice when you come in the room. Yeah. But there's something so disarming about you. Your kids notice it. They talk about it. Uh, there's just a there's a comfort level yeah. with you. Yeah. And I, I, obviously that's something that's been developed. But that's who you are, and that's a big part of your magic. Yeah. I think. Appreciate so, that. Yeah. 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 Um, tell us a little bit about like the industry you're in, what you've enjoyed about it, mm -hmm. and uh, some of your experiences. You know, I'm always thinking about people out there that are you know, wondering what career to choose, yeah. what path to take. And you're, you're a little ahead of me and ahead of a lot of people that are gonna be watching this. So mm -hmm. give us some insight on how that looks for you, 
how you enjoyed it um, and how you came to that career too. I, uh, I'm in broadcasting, of course, uh, radio respectively. Uh, came out of <clears throat> Langston University uh, with a degree in broadcast journalism. So we cover television, radio, news writing, and photography. And, and I just had a love just for all of that. I love taking pictures. I love cameras. Wow, think about that in the <laughs> 80s. And now you have cell phones taking pictures or whatever. And, and with radio, I didn't ha necessarily have a fascination to be on the radio. And I've heard a lot of radio guys say this, you know, I would always go to sleep with a transistor radio under my pillow because I didn't want mom to know that I was listening to the radio. And I would just scan all night long until I fell asleep. I find something, listen, whether it was opera music. And I was so fascinating. It wasn't about a format. It was just about listening to something. And at that moment, it just took me away listening to country music or listening to classical music. And I'm gonna show you my age. You probably <laughs> never heard of this, but I listened to Dr. Demento. <laughs> no, I've never heard of that. I gotta okay. admit, Terry. <laughs> Dr. Demento was uh, ahead of his time. Dr. Demento was, was a guy, I have no idea where he broadcasts from, but his show, I think it was like a one or two hour show on the radio on AM that consisted of all parody songs. And believe it or not, Weird Al Yankovic. I was, that was the name I know, yeah. This was before his time <laughs> because Weird Al actually was, uh, I don't know if he was in high school or in college, he just started making spoof songs and started sending them to Dr. Demento before wow. he became a popular recording artist or whatever. Had to be inspired by Dr. Demento, I'm assuming. Because he was an outlet. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. because he would create these parody songs or whatever. So, and that's what I would listen to, you know, just different programs, you know. So I do have some buddies that I grew up with and, and I am in the profession of broadcasting and they say, hey man, I remember when you were a kid, man, you were always fascinated with radio. <laughs> and I would look at them like, no, I wasn't, dude. <laughs> I was not interested in radio. But, but I guess uh, it, it kind of developed once I started and, you know, once I got to college, uh, I was majoring in business uh, the first year and because my grandmother told me to, <laughs> <laughs> and I was struggling, man, I was struggling. And uh, it wasn't until uh, I started listening to the guys, uh, the, the campus radio station. Okay. And, uh, and I would see those guys walking around campus so I would go back to the dorms at night and scan and listen. And it's like, this is pretty cool. Mm. These guys are pretty cool walking around campus and they're putting together shows and things like that. And then I just became fascinated. And uh, uh, the following semester, changed my major to broadcast journalism, had to have the sit down meeting with my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> she was so disappointed. <laughs> uh, she, had you all, she had plans for you. Oh, she had plans for me. <laughs> but I just told her, I just said, Granny, I just, I can't do it. My heart's not in it. And, and I think I want to pursue this, this broadcasting thing. And uh, then she gave me her blessing. She said, hey, if it's your dream, follow it. Yeah. And uh, then the rest is kind of history. So, and, 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 it wasn't until I enrolled in the journalism classes, man, where uh, uh, radio, television, photography, news writing, stage management, and I started making straight A's, man. That's when you knew. Oh, it, it, it was easy. Yeah. You know, and it was yeah. fun. That, there's something there, because I feel like a lot of us, you kind of go through, you try some things along the way, and then that thing that just comes more naturally to yeah. you, that's the thing to press into. Yeah. And you've taught me that. I mean, just... Just watching your life, but then also just, and you, some of us got to learn too, yeah. you know, where you just kind of try some things. One of the things that's interesting too, I think, and you've shared your story with me before, the, the connections along the way were the key. Yeah. It was almost like you kept following the relationships yeah. and that's how you knew to keep going in this certain direction. Is that true? Yeah. And maybe describe that for us. Yeah, you. I think so. I think I, I think I still going back to that quiet kid that didn't have very many friends because I was tall and quiet and awkward. I always feel the need to connect with folks, you know, uh, at the height of my broadcasting career with the company that I'm with, I, I had at least 18 uh, stations at one time. So there would be times where my office manager, someone would come in and want to talk about music and it would be a local artist at the front desk. And, and, uh, 
I could hear the conversation. Of course, my office manager, no, you need to make an appointment. You don't have a scheduled appointment. And I would just step out of my <laughs> office and I would have a pile yeah. of work on my desk, you know, managing all the radio stations, but I would talk to the individual and I'm a talker, man, yeah. especially if there are holes in the person, don't, they don't understand. I just have the need to empower them. Yeah. You know, I don't talk <laughs> at them and you need to do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. I just always tell individuals like, look, if, if you listen, I'll tell you. Yeah. And what I want to do is empower you with the knowledge so you can go to any radio stations. Wow. And so I'm not talking at you, telling you what to do. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving you the knowledge. It's like I'm putting it in a box and I'm giving yep. it to you. So yep. you have to accept it and understand it. And hopefully you can take that knowledge that I give you that I've been exposed to and you can take it anywhere. So I just have the need once again to connect with individuals and be able to throw that sunshine on them, man. <laughs> there we that's go. a big takeaway from this. Uh, you were a natural mentor too. And of course that's one of the ways our, our relationship began is that Terry was my mentor. Yeah. And I appreciate the time you spent with me uh, then. And then, but there's just something about you that and I think it is what you pointed to. I think most of us humans don't want to be told what to do, yeah. but we want to have access to information when we're ready. Yeah, that's And good. that's what you're really good at. You do, you just kind of set it there. Okay, it's there. And now me, I'm soaking it up. I'm like, I, that's exactly right. I'm trying to pursue that, yeah. but I didn't have to. Yeah. And I think we all like to be in that position where there's not a forcefulness to it. And you're really good at that, men that kind of mentorship. Yeah, I appreciate that. So, yeah. Um, the one of the things that I think is, is interesting too, is that when you get, I've already noticed this in my stage of life, I'm 36, mm -hmm. but you start, people start looking at you like, wow, you're very successful. You have this wonderful family. They start thinking about you in a different way. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, at least for my own life, I'm still in a way, I'm still trying to make it right. I'm still trying to figure it out my life. Right. Mm -hmm. And the success that I want and the things I'm pursuing. But then there's moments where I just sit back and go, you know what? There are people that would love to be in my spot yeah. and they're listening. They're wanting to learn from my life. It's hard to believe yeah. almost, yeah. but they do. Yeah. And so in that context, I wonder if you've ever felt that where, you know, you're at a lot of people look up to you, both in your family, your career, mm -hmm. your leadership. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it goes back to maybe gratefulness or there's some kind of context there. But maybe just talk about that. I'll just kind of throw that out there for, I don't know if that's even a question, but what are your thoughts around that? Um, that that's a pretty, pretty good observation. I think, I think selfishly, you know, speaking for myself, sometimes we don't really understand how we influence others. You know, even if we do have the desire to connect uh, and spread some sunshine, you know, to uplift others or whatever, you know, it goes back to when we went through the mentorship program and I told you that uh, I saw the, the homeless guy across the street and I was studying and eating my lunch and, and then I just, just felt the need to, to go and tell him that I see you. I think we all have that within us where we want to be seen and we want to be heard. And sometimes we don't understand the people that we do influence, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, and I say that because it's easy for me to be in my own world with my family and go to work and go to church and come home and go to work and go to church and come home. And that was one of the great things that, that I shared with you when we went through the mentorship program, you know, was uh, understanding that I need that connection. Mm -hmm. So you came at a point in time in my life where I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. I just kind of went to church, went to work and went back home or whatever. So with our relationship and mentorship, you know, that, that just uh, spoke volumes to me because it made me understand that, you know, the things that I want, I need to give and I need to become. Mm -hmm. So you helped me open the door to appreciate all those relationships, the, the guys that I went biking with on weekends yep. or whatever, and, you know, and other relationships like that. So yeah, there's always a need of, of, of guys or people just connecting, yeah. you know, and the yeah. influence that we have and not knowing it. Not knowing it, yeah. People are watching, yeah. we're all leaders. Yeah. We don't all realize it, yep. but we're all leaders. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Oh, no doubt. Okay, so kind of three, uh, three things I want to talk about at the end here. Okay. Number one, talk about music for a second. 
these uh, young, when you were talking about those young musicians coming in to the radio station, trying to figure it out, talk a little bit about that. What's that look like? I know, just because I know you, that there's musicians all over the world yeah. that know you and respect you, call you, mm -hmm. and you have these strong relationships, but it didn't necessarily start there. Yeah. You've been investing in young musicians for a long time. Yeah. Just, just got to ask you that question, just because yeah. I know that's who you are and what you do. Yeah, I think uh, the bottom line, you know, the number one thing that I always get is what do I need to do to get my music played on the radio station, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, or they'll tell me that, you know, will you play it on the radio station to help it to become popular. And based off my observation, what I've experienced in, in following the trends in the music industry, uh, the bottom line boils down to, you know, you have to create your brand. Just period, and it applies to everything. You know, the way I see it, it applies to a business and, and to a person as a musician as well. Those principles are, are the same. If you have something, a product or service that you provide, you, number one, it needs to be good. You, it needs to have substance, yeah. you know, because if you have a song and you can't sing, right. then you might want to try fixing on cars, <laughs> try another profession. <laughs> Shift gears a little. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So you need to have something good. And then once you have that product, that service, or that song, then you figure out how do I get it to consumers? Mm -hmm. And once you get it out to consumers, you have to grow the, that, those five individuals. How can I grow those five individuals to 10? Mm -hmm. How can I grow those 10 individuals to 100? Yeah. How can I grow my, my fan base? And then once you have that fan base, super serve them. And then how can I turn that fan base into loyal consumers with merchandising, yep. maybe with more product, with me performing live, you know, so whatever it is. So just understanding uh, your fan base. So you have to create it because at the end of the day, yes, radio stations will break music, but, but traditionally radio stations want to tap in into a movement mm -hmm. because you are popular. Yep. It's not radio stations job to get a kid that create a song in their garage and then they bring it to the radio station like, oh yeah, I'm gonna put you on and I'm gonna make you overnight sensation. Right. Uh, I go back to one of my favorite artists, Elvis. <laughs> yes, I'm a brother that loves Elvis. <laughs> this guy was hot as fish grease, man. <laughs> hot as fish grease. Remember hey, that. You know, I gotta take, I'm using that today. <laughs> he was hot as fish grease, man. So. Uh, you better believe uh, Colonel Parker, you know, saw that and he wanted to put him out to the masses because he already had it. Yeah. Yeah. I just need to put him out and expose him. And the rest is history, yeah. man. Yeah, I think that's and I'm glad you said that because I, I'm learning that right now. You know, you you can't just build it and they will come. Yeah. And just because you have a great song doesn't mean a bunch of people are going to hear it. Yeah. Hear it. There's a lot of great artists out there that have written just amazing stuff yeah. and they never get heard. Yeah. So whether that is for you to learn how to market it, mm -hmm. to get the word out there one by one or five by five, like you're saying, or, you know, teaming up with someone. Yeah. And I always think of, that's why you and I have a great connection, I think, is because I love building things and you love telling people. Yeah. I and mean, you're such a great, like, marketer, like I said. So yeah, there's some magic there to have that partnership in some way as well so yeah thanks for sharing that okay. young musicians out there i know it's always a question <laughs> you probably get that you're tired of that one but uh no people want to know because yeah. you're that you know you've been around it a long time and you've seen the shift yeah you know from radio like literally introducing songs to now they might find it find it another place yeah. but it's still a similar similar thing yeah, the listening, the listening patterns change as far as how they can uh, consume music and where they go to listen to music. So yeah. uh, that's the only difference between uh, 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 1982 to 2023. You know, the vehicle is different, vehicle. but uh, we, can, we still consume it. Yeah, yeah. And building fans one at a time, I think that's something that it, it takes some patience and mm -hmm. it's hard, but it's... Uh, yeah, that's how you build any business. Mm -hmm. So, okay, a couple quick hitters. Faith, tell me a little about your faith. I know that's a big question, but I know that's a big part of who you are, you and your family. So talk about your faith for just a couple I, minutes. I think my faith uh, is, is the core, you know, of, of who I am. You know, it's, it's, it's almost, uh, I, I don't want to get too abstract, but I'm just thinking it's, 
it's, it's like a compass, you know, I can never be lost, you know, uh, it's my faith is, uh, um, it, it keeps me grounded. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives me purpose of knowing who I am because sometimes we can look at uh, outside and, and, and our worth and value is on maybe status and money and what we don't have and we see what other people have. But I think, you know, uh, uh, my faith and understanding with my relationship uh, in Jesus Christ, it, it just keeps me rooted, you know. Um, uh, I just, just can't say enough about that. Yeah, I love that. You find your value in God. Yes, yeah. 100%. One last question. Mm -hmm. We're, we are in an optical shop. I don't know if you notice. Enjoy optical here. <laughs> so, and we've talked about glasses quite a bit. But tell me about your relationship, your experience, your past with sunglasses and eyeglasses. Just yeah. I'll give you a couple minutes. Yeah, you, you, you know, it goes back. Once again, you never know what people are going through. You know, that's why I just want to connect and I want you to have a positive experience, whether that's a conversation or something. You know, because one thing that I don't like is going somewhere and feeling uncomfortable and, well, I don't want to ask questions. I don't want to seem stupid. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I've had plenty of those experiences <laughs> or whatever, you know. Uh, but I think uh, as, as I turned 41, 42 and uh, realized that there's not a cell phone big enough for me to see the words. <laughs> and then I say, you know, I think I better go get my eyes checked out. And, and it, it kind of opened up a whole brand new world. I know some people feel like, well, I feel old because I have to wear glasses mm -hmm. now. I never looked at it like that. Yes, I was in denial because it's like, well, something's happening, you know? Uh, this is my cell phone now, <laughs> and I still can't see the words. <laughs> and I realized, of course, uh, getting glasses, and I embraced them. Mm -hmm. But, man, I've been wearing some form of glasses, which are shades, you know, ever since I was old enough to work and start buying. So, for me, it's a fashion statement. Mm -hmm. So one thing that, that I can appreciate about Enjoy Optical and our relationship, man, is that uh, you really held my hand and educated me, you know, and made me understand the difference between mass production and individual designers or whatever. And uh, I just, I was just blown away, you know, because I never understood it. You know, I would never, ever buy a pair of glasses that's mass produced or whatever. And I am off into the individuals that maybe have a collection or series or whatever. And uh, I just, I spread it. I tell other folks too, it's like, hey man, I got some good news, brother. <laughs> and I got a guy <laughs> that can educate yeah. you and yeah. hold your hand. Yeah. But I mean, but seriously, I mean, especially if I know someone that they don't just have something to sell. It's like, no, this guy's not gonna sell anything right. to you. You right. need to go and talk to him yeah. and he will educate you. Yeah. Because you held my hand through the process yeah. and you know that's what it's about. You yeah. know? Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, that's, that trust, it comes yeah. down to that, whether it's music or glasses or yeah. we're trying to build those long-term relationships where we're teaching people what we know and building that trust yeah. over time. So. And sharing, sharing who we are. I think that's why, like, it's fun friendship, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, I always say, like, it's friendship. Yeah. You and I have that connection. Yeah. And I appreciate you being a good, good friend and yeah. sharing your story with us yeah. today. Yeah, I appreciate you too, man. Yeah, man. Cool. Yeah. Sunshine, man. <laughs> <laughs> you get some sunshine. It. You get some sunshine. Well, what was that other line? Elvis, about, you said Elvis uh, Grease. About grease. Oh, oh, yeah. hotter, hotter, than, than, hotter than fish grease. <laughs> hotter than fish grease and dropping sunshine. There you go. There you have it. <laughs> That's new merchandise, man. Hotter than fish grease. Get you some sunshine. Merch coming soon. <laughs> uh, yeah, how did you, wait, but how did you come around to loving Elvis? Like, what is, do you remember when? Scanning. Scanning the just radio, scanning. yeah, and just, just seeing this guy sing and perform. And, <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, when I was young, he started making the movies, and it's just like, yo, man, 